Hello, welcome to the I Am Badass Podcast. This is Lonnie, and today I'm talking about divine feminine energy, how to totally be in flow, how to fucking simplify your life, and so you could just live your best life. I'm talking energy, I'm talking love, I'm talking friends, I'm talking love making. So cute, one of my clients page. And my purpose program was like, I am going to preach love all day, every day. I'm like, yes, queen. That's what I'm talking about. So we'll jump right in here. Now, this is the biggest, most common problem that I run into with my clients. And this was also my biggest misconception and where I was really confused and where I would super over dramatize and make shit really chaotic and stressful for no reason. I did not understand. I had never seen it. I never ever saw a woman in her divine feminine, and that's just a fact, I never saw it. I would see a woman totally be in her head and be super needy, and that's what I learned was feminine, like in the media or whatever from family, like, oh, whatever, you're like, oh, are you on your period? You're being so bitchy, or you're crying, you're being so crazy. Like, I just, I I learned a wrong definition of feminine. That's just the simplest way to put it, right? I had a broken belief of what being feminine was. And I hear this from every single client. I'll get them to identify what's the broken beliefs about being feminine, that it's weak, that it's embarrassing to cry, that we have to do everything, like, you know, men are are better, that like we have to hide who we are in front of a man because they'll think we're crazy or we're too emotional. Being vulnerable is like disgusting, asking for help is embarrassing, and saying sorry. (laughs) So many of my clients are like, if you heard the podcast with Yete a few ago, and if, dear God, if you missed my podcast last week on overcoming sexual shame and guilt, pause now, go back. It's literally a game changer. That's the, the most action and comments. And the most breakthroughs that I've ever gotten on a podcast episode were from last week. So definitely go listen to that now and listen to it again because let's get real. You can't soak everything in the first time. So with the joke is like, oh, I used to feel like pukey or like throwing up if I had to say sorry. And it's so counterintuitive for ego and for that protection mechanism because When we are faced in a situation where we aren't perfect, which let's get real, we're never fucking perfect. I am never ever going to be the person who's gonna just like stop learning and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just stay at the CrossFit gym where I'm the best. Oh, I'm just gonna stay in this, you know, uh, coaching group where I'm the best. Absolutely not. There are always things to be learned. There's always room to grow. If we're not growing, we're dying. So the, it's so counterintuitive to the ego that when we get feedback to be like, okay, like the first reaction for a woman. So here's, here's a great sign that you are in your fucking head, that you are totally disconnected from your feminine, that fear is driving and you're, and like, you don't have any confidence and it's not because you're a horrible person. It's just like a really simple fact that you are not connected to your divine feminine. You are not embodied. Fear is driving. The fear of not being good enough is totally driving your life. So therefore, everything is a threat. So when we get some feedback or when we're learning or when we fuck up, instead of saying, sorry, like t- instead of taking responsibility, which it's totally a blow to the ego, let's just get real. It's totally a blow. I used to, when I started CrossFit, I would watch the coaches go give corrections and I'd see the person like completely arguing with the coach. I was like, wow, what are you even doing? Why are you even here? If I was the coach, I would never try to help your ass again. It's so weird. Why are you arguing with somebody who is trying to help you and like trying to really help you? Like you could fuck yourself up if you get a ball in a lift with your back arched or with super hyper extended arms. It's like, they just want to help you. Why are you getting so crazy? Why are you getting so angry? But this is the most common broken belief that as a society we have totally adopted about being in our feminine energy. And I get it. I used to be that woman. I used to full on, oh great, I'm not good enough and I'd have to fight till the death. So you know one of my favorite sayings is, do you, would you rather be right or do you want to be happy and feel peace? And for me, it, there's, it's, an, it's a, I have, you know, it's a no brainer. I have a zero tolerance. I know that being in my my divine feminine, no fucking excuse is gonna be good enough for me to go, oh yeah, okay, so 
you're defensive, you're taking it personal, you're grumpy, you're having a bad day like say I'm talking to myself, but you're still connected to your divine feminine. Absolutely not, you're disconnected. It's not because you're not good enough, it's not because you're an idiot. Fact, you're disconnected. There's no way, no excuse, no scenario, no situation. If you are any of those negative traits, you're completely disconnected, you're in your head and you're there's no feminine, beautiful, divine, connection going on, the, the very essence, the very definition, the very meaning of our divine feminine is this openness and this connection. So that's the first part and it is, it, it's a total blow. Someone comes up and tells you, you do something wrong, the first reaction is to fight back, say but, oh I'm sorry but, well you're not fucking sorry if you say but after. Like you're not going to learn anything new if you're so busy defending what you did that, that sucked. It's just so mind blowing to me. So. That first part of being in our feminine energy is when we feel threatened and when we feel like we're not good enough, we totally shut up, put like shut, yeah, shut everything down, shut the hatches, put the guard up and go into like full battle mode, like fighting. And so I've actually trained myself to do the exact opposite, which is so counterintuitive to the ego because I am literally completely dropping all of my weapons exposing all my most vulnerable parts and I'm like okay ego take it bitch like there's it's like if someone comes up to punch you in the face your first reaction is to block it and that's what the ego is doing and so I've trained myself to not put my arms up not block it and just like let my ego take a copying and it's like deal with that bitch because we're not perfect we're here to get better smarter and just like Paige says Paige says preach love every day so you take that you take that beating ego because that's what it means to to be in this beautiful vulnerable connected energy of growth we can never learn from something if we're shut if we don't want to if we don't think we need to learn anything if we're defending what we did and acting like it was everybody else's fault that one's huge that one literally changed my life that was the game changer I always, I have these incredible tools that are really simple and I just literally strengthen that very, right? It's that, it's that full evolutionary protection that just wants to put the hands up when they think someone's going to punch them and I've literally trained. So I've like reprogrammed my mind from evolutionary survival, which is essentially worst case scenario negativity to best case scenario and positivity. And that one is so beautiful because I always know that the reason someone's giving me feedback is because they, they're they trying to help me, because they actually really care about me, because they see my potential. So I'm like, fuck yeah. I like walk into CrossFit and I'm like, I always introduce myself. I'm like, I'm sort of new at this. I love like any corrections you have, anything, let me know what you see on my lips. And I just take it in and I soak it up like a wet sponge and I say, yes, coach. And I don't bitch and I don't say but and I don't argue with them. I'm just all, yes, coach. So that one's huge. That one's amazing and beautiful. And this, the second part of that is I had never seen a woman in her divine feminine. So I didn't know that being in my feminine meant that I was being the strongest version of myself and the most present version. So the way that I would describe it is the most alert, the most precise, not overcomplicating things, not making things dramatic, not arguing. I'm not available to argue. I just took course writing lessons and she said, she was teaching me how to turn the horse and how to stop and how to go. And she said, he has no reason not to listen to you. This isn't a fight. And I, I was just like, oh my God, because my philosophy is every new thing that I learn I am obsessed and my number one goal is like, how can I be the most incredible, loving human being? So everything I learn, I take that and I put it into my philosophy of how can I be more embodied? How can I get over and out of my ego faster? And how can I share love and kindness even faster and even greater, right? I want to share it with more women and I want to share it faster. So I, I have goosebumps now. I was like, Oh my God, like in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's like, isn't that so what we do with the ego? And I can just imagine all these, she obviously has to say that for a reason. So I just imagine all these people on a horse and they're just like fighting with the horse. And she's like, he, he has no reason to like not go left. He wants to go left. Like you just have to guide him with, with a little bit of pressure. 
It's not a fight. You're not fighting him. It's not the person who pulls the hardest wins. It's not aggressive. You don't need to get like crazy and you don't need to overcomplicate her and you don't need to be a fucking drama queen. Like let's dress gently. She taught me, you know, pull and release, pull and release and the horse will turn. And what a concept. And I was like, oh my gosh. So that idea that being in my feminine means that I'm not in control of my life and I'm weak, right? All those broken beliefs that I mentioned at the beginning. And it's like, we think that, oh, it must be a fight. Like, that's how I prove I'm strong. I win the fight. Isn't that it? I win the fight. So that would be the only reason why we would argue with someone when we fucked up. Like, oh, because I'm strong if I win the fight. It's like, dude, it's not a fight. We're not, I'm not available for arguing. It's not a fight. The universe has no reason to not give us everything that we've ever wanted. If you're being a drama queen, if you're being a little bitch, if you're making shit up out of nowhere and taking stuff personal and acting like it's harder for you, like you're the one that's creating the drama, not the universe, just like with the horse. Like if I was making a scene on the horse, it's like the horse isn't creating the drama. I'm the one creating the drama. So I thought that was like so epic. I was like, dude, I get ya. I am not going to fight with you, buddy. And we had an awesome little, little ride around. So I had never experienced that. I had never seen that before. I've shared this in many podcasts that I became this version of Lonnie that I didn't know yet. So I just had a Perth hangout with all of my women who joined the program from the Epic Perth workshop. And I have another one coming up on March 14th. So if you're interested, hit a girl up. And my let be your last chance to see me in Australia. We got a worldwide tour planned, baby. We are going all over the world. 2020 is going to be so epic. I had a meet up with all of my women. They're so fun and so amazing. And I would, first thing that was so awesome was you think that that many women get together. It would only be for like a bachelorette party. Like I had a hundred women in my last workshop. I'll have a hundred at the next one. And it's like that many women in one room is really uncommon. And when we all meet at this bar, I was thinking, oh my God, I'm sure everybody thinks it's like a bachelorette party or something because when did that many women ever get together? And I feel so proud because my standards are so high that it's actually a choice to have a positive attitude. I'm not happy 24 hours a day and I'm not perfect, but you bet your ass that I can choose to have a positive attitude and I do practice every day going to best case scenario. So I've actually reprogrammed that evolutionary bullshit dog shit into best case scenario and I can shift my energy as fast as I decide to and it takes one second to make a decision bitch not 10 years when people are always like oh well this person took like eight years to heal I was like yeah well I have a woman in my program who healed that in four days like why the fuck would you want to like settle for like is really that's your goal like Jesus shoot any lower like i'm always trying to beat the one that did it the fastest i'm like okay i would never ever find the the person who was like who ran the race the slowest and be like oh well obviously i should just run it at that slow race it's like dude no i'm gonna find the most epic fit person fit, find their recipe and figured out how they ran it so fast and had fun and that's my goal that's what i'm aiming for so every there's no drama no one's grumpy, no one's angry, no one's me, no one's judging, no one's bitchy. We all have a great attitude, we all have a great fucking time. And I was just like, this is so amazing because the old Lonnie, every time I hung out with like even one woman, oh my God, I had so many like screaming matches with girlfriends that were like, we were meant to be best friends, but we'd like talk shit on each other and we were super jealous. So we couldn't even handle just two women together without having that bitchiness and that cattiness, let alone this many women. And I just felt so proud that my standards or that high, I mean, like, geez, even family, family shit, there's like always some drama, you know? So no drama, just everybody is decided that they are gonna have a great time because they are in charge of it. And I've chosen, I've taught them how to choose their feelings. So that's the first one that was really awesome. And the second part is the women are like, who do you look at? Like, who's your Lonnie? Like you're like you're Lonnie and we like want to have the energy, like not live your life your way, but we love that you do it your way. And so that gives me the excitement and the confidence that I can do it my way because they see my crazy ass cussing and dancing sexy and just being myself and I'm completely thriving in every way. Like I'm just being me. So that's a big reason why women come to me like, oh my God, you're just totally yourself. Like, wow. Since when has being yourself become a superpower? I don't know, but that's why I have a job. So there's that. 
And they're like, who do you look up, look up to? And I was like, so it's always men, like all of my mentors, it's like men, 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 and they all do these incredible things. And I said, I just let it soak in and I feel it. And the Lonnie that will be doing that, I haven't met yet, but I just bring that into my divine feminine. And it's like, okay, so this is what it would feel like and look like when a woman does it. So instead of being connected to the divine masculine, like the men that I look up to, I'm like, okay, so how, what would this look like and, and be like, and who's that Lonnie that I haven't met yet, who's in her divine feminine and doing these huge, incredible things, helping millions of women making this huge impact and living a purpose. I'm getting teary-eyed because it's just like so beautiful and exciting. So that's one of my philosophies because I had not met that. I had not seen a woman fully embodied. And by that, I mean, I am sexy. I am rich. I am confident. I am a woman. I have a vulva and a vagina. I cry. I have boundaries. And anyone who's ever worked with me, it's this really, it's the pocket. It's like the most beautiful place that we, that we don't get to experience. Like I don't really see this on TV shows or we don't, I never saw this in my family. Like it wasn't something I ever saw. It's like one extreme, like, oh, the feminine, like either just like so soft and no backbone. One of my clients was like, dude. I couldn't go to someone that's like, oh, just like run barefoot and like wear these crystals and like put glitter on your nipple. She's like, I needed like real life shit. Like she's like a badass boss bitch. She's like, okay, that's like the only feminine energy supposedly. I'm putting it in like bunny ears quotations because it's like, oh, she would never like cuss and she would always like look perfectly beautiful and she would never say no and she's just like a fairy, right? And then... And then the other side is like a woman in her masculine who's like successful and like rich. And so where's that balance? And for me, the pocket and the sweet spot is I have extraordinary standards. And if I didn't, like shit would be chaotic because there are this many women. A lot of them have trauma. Everyone has pain. Everyone has a story. And you give the ego an inch and it will be complaining and bitching and negativity and worst case scenario like all day. So it's, I'm just not available for that. So I am, I have the strongest boundaries and the most extraordinary standards. And I'm like, I don't feel sorry for you. If you cry, I'm not going to let you settle and make excuses for why you don't have everything you want. If you're overcomplicating and overwhelmed and exhausted, you're not fucking killing it. So your strategy isn't working. Like I'm not going to say, Oh, I'm so sorry. Or like, Poor you, it's that absolutely not. I'm like, here's what a queen does. A queen has so much integrity and has done it herself. So it's like, okay, I know you're when you're being a drama queen. I know when you're exhausted and I know when you're not completely open and connected and feeling this freedom that you're in your head. You're not connected to your divine feminine. And... I hear so many women, they're like, I used to totally push around my coaches. Like I was the strong one. Like I would get into that, right? Cause it's that like confrontational and I'm not available to argue and I'm not available for confrontation in like a, you know, a hurtful mean way. I am available to speak truth and talk about really uncomfortable things. And I don't get rattled when really, when the situation gets really uncomfortable because someone's fully an ego and just totally looking to be like, you know, fight, like and go for an argument, I'm just not available for that. And of course it gets uncomfortable because what would the, like, yeah, sure, in a perfect world, which would never happen, we would all just wake up perfect and like, you know, have unicorn dust coming out of our tits and like it, there would be no, no, no growth because that's what feeling uncomfortable is, it's growth. And in order to, to thrive, we need to be growing. So there's this pocket where I am so present and I see right past the drama because I can see the ego a fucking mile away and I am not available for excuses. I am not available for settling and it has nothing to do with you not being good enough, but I will never feed that ego. I will never treat an ego special. I will never argue with an ego because that's not what love is. That's not being in the divine feminine. All I must do is be connected and be love and breathe 
and completely have this incredible divine feminine energy flowing through me and it's a muscle. I wasn't always able to do it this strong. I, I am getting stronger every day, therefore my clients are getting stronger every day and they're coming in like with this ability to tap in faster and connect faster. That's always my goal. I'm like, I don't care if, it, if you've been in therapy for 40 years and it hasn't worked, let's try and smash, like break this broken belief in three days so you can then totally thrive and kick ass and have it all. So there's just so much I can say on this one. And it's, it's actually so simple. So I'm going to leave you with this. Where are you overcomplicating in life? And where are you actually blocking and rejecting love? Because that's what feedback is. Learning is love. Feedback is love. We're never going to be perfect. But while we take it personal that we're never going to be perfect, we're actually just fighting the very things that we need to heal and grow. We need this beautiful learning information we need to mess up so we can go, hey, that didn't work. I totally didn't get the outcome I wanted and I don't feel the way that I want to feel. So that strategy didn't work for me. Like I will just try another one. This is how I've gotten so far so fast. And what is, what's truly then feminine to you and not going from the movies or porn or what you learned from your parents like find someone find a woman who has everything that you want and instead of making excuses for oh that's just because i'm a woman and being in my feminine means like i have to be weak and i have to win and i can't cry it's like find a woman who has everything you want and i guarantee she will have been able to do those right? Overcome that evolutionary mindset of I have to win and I have to fight. And if someone's punching me, just fully protecting the ego and fully going into victim mode and poor me mode, I guarantee that she has learned the skill of being completely open, totally in the moment in that pocket of strength and soft at the same time, that beautiful energy of vulnerability and fucking power that incredible like that that juice right the nectar the sweet spot the juice of like sensual and sexy and freaking beast like it's so beautiful and it's so amazing so yeah i fully inspire you to challenge the your ideas of being a feminine and really ask yourself what was there really a woman who i could have learned this divine feminine from was there really a woman that i knew under the age of seven because that's when our programs are downloaded where i learned that it is my strongest state to be in my feminine that's my sexiest my strongest my softest my my most creative my most vulnerable my most powerful state like who did you learn about the feminine from and if so if they don't have everything that you want why are you still following their recipe all right thank you so much for listening let's really, really share this forward. I am on a roll. You know I want to help a million women by the end of 2020 and I need your help. So please share this episode with a sister. Uh, it would just make my day. I'd be so grateful. And of course, any comments, any questions, I'd love to know what you would like me to talk about. So if there's anything that you're like, oh my gosh, Lonnie, like talk about this one. The episodes where we really get into the shame and guilt. Like I said, lat the last podcast are the ones that women are really just like, fuck, no one's ever talked to me about this. Like I have felt so alone and so shamed. And so thank you for shining a light and, and just frick telling me that I'm not alone and I'm not the only one. Oh, great, great connection. Great connection. I love this feminine. So thank you for listening. I will see you next week. Share this episode forward. Have an amazing week. So much love. Talk to you soon. Yee! Sister, thanks for listening to my podcast episode. If you need more episodes, go to iTunes or Spotify and search Lonnie and Alu. They're amazing for the train, for commuting, for the car. If you're a video kind of a girl, make sure you watch that one and that one and subscribe so you can get more videos. See you soon.